Hi again guys, it's Andy here from Awesome 3D Prints and I've had a request to show the assembly of the 3D printed cigarette box that I did before so I've printed another one, it's okay, don't worry, it won't get to waste and I'll show you the steps from build plate to assembling it completely you will need some glue you'll also need a spring from a like a, a clicky biro pen you'll need one of those as well um, and that's about it really, so I'll, I'll uh, get this on the bench and I'll show you step by step how to assemble it. All right guys, we're back at the bench. Now I printed mine with a brim um, because there's so many um, square bits with corners that are easy to lift up off the bed. Um, I printed mine with a brim just to, just to make it stick a little bit easier to the bed. It's not something you necessarily have to do if you think your printer's good or you, the adhesive method you're using to stick stuff to the print bed's good enough, then you won't need the brim. But just to save wasted print, because as you saw from the earlier the earlier shot that I actually had everything um, on the print bed at once. So of course if one thing falls off, it knocks everything off and then, you, then you're in trouble. So um, up to you, but I would use a brim. It does need, however, you've got to knock everything on the floor whilst you're trying to pull the brim off stuff like I've just done there. But anyway, just peel the brim off. Try and get it as close to the, the actual item as you can otherwise you're going to end up having to get a Stanley knife to it and go around the edge to, to peel off all the bits and pieces. I'm going to carry on and uh, get the rest of this brim off and then I'll come back and we'll, we'll go from there. Right okay so that's the brim all stripped of everything. Um, we'll start with the, the first bit to assemble that's the very bottom bottom piece here as you can see. Now You've got to put the, the spring in now. A lot of people suggest printing this out of separate material. I've only tried PLA and PETG. Uh, the PETG was useless. It broke very, very quickly. And I don't know why I always thought the PETG would be stronger, but generally it didn't. The PLA seems to have lasted longer than the other one that I've done, but who knows long-term. One thing I did find is assembling this one, when you put your spring in and you get your key holder, when you put them together, it doesn't actually close as you can see it doesn't close close enough there's too much of a gap here it doesn't it won't let you put the rest of the piece in so i always end up cutting this spring down i'm not entirely sure why it's so much bigger but um i end up having to just trim with you know whatever you've got to hand the knife some of the typical creality shears whatever just to, to take a few of these sections off just to make sure if you don't take too much off do it a little bit at a time because you do want it to spring out with a decent amount of force but also the more pressure you put on the the side when you you pull the slide bit out it, it makes it more difficult to get the slide bit out in the first place so it's kind of getting it right so just snip off a little bit sort of i think usually it's around four or five but we'll just snip off three to start off with just to just to see what happens and then try that and see if it's any better. It is slightly better, but it's still, as you can see, it still won't quite fit in this again. Snip a bit more off, just do a bit at a time, because if you do too much, you end up having to print the whole spring again, and that's a bit of a, a bit of a pain. As you can see, I've printed this in silk PLA filament, which looks really nice. It's really nice and shiny. However, I do find that the silk stuff isn't as strong as traditional PLA filament. So you have to be careful with some of the parts, especially these bits. When you're trying to put them on the outside and you push quite hard, if you push near the top because of the, the thin line there, it, you can find these bits break off quite easily. So be careful with those. Anyway, um, spring still doesn't quite fit. So again, take another, another couple off. sliding in which is this bit and see if you can get it to meet without too much too much pressure it does slide in now but there's quite a lot of pressure on there I think getting this out might still be a little bit tricky so I might take just another one off the spring I'm 
onto it. Right, that, that seems a little better. And when you've got that and you're happy with it, which I'm quite happy with that, just do a quick test fit. Don't glue anything yet. Take the top part of the box and seat it on the bottom half. And then pull that out. It pulls out nice and easily. And as long as it pulls out, I mean, pulls out nice and easily. And the bit still springs out, it's just all there. So that's really good news. Ugh. So one thing I would suggest you do as well is when you're gluing it, glue it with the drawer out because as you put it in, obviously the spring can sometimes cause this to push up and it will cause the box to separate with the glue. So next, you need these two pieces, which are the front of the box. The shorter piece of the two with the gap this side sits at the front over here. The longer piece of the two with a gap, that side sits over there. And again, test for everything before you glue it, just to make sure you've got it right and you know what it's supposed to be doing. So put that in there, take this piece, slot it in there, and then get the top piece and just sit it on top. It's quite tricky to try and get everything in place whilst you hold it down. But in theory, if you've got everything right, <laughs> I told you it was tricky. Let's try that again. Right. Now, in theory, if I can pick it up without it going spoingle everywhere. There we go. Now, keep it pinched. You should be able to slide that all the way over there to reveal this bit. You should be able to pull this bit out. That pops out, so that's working. And then push that back. And then slide this one across. Slide this one across to there, so that you can, when this is on, slide this bit down. And this bit slides back, so that's perfect. I'm really happy with that. So now, when you've got it to that sort of shape, slide it all across and just pull this bit out so the drawer slides out. Now, like that, it'll quite happily sit, so now's the time to glue that bit on, because you can take this bit off now without it all going sproingle. Now, I've tried different ways of gluing this. Um, I've tried just sort of putting a bead around the edge so it lines up here, but it always ends up making a mess. I think the best way is just to try and glue all of the, the holes and see how well it holds. If it's strong enough, great. If not, you might have to put another bead around the edge of the box, but we'll... Uh... Right, so this is a new glue. I've not used this one before. It's a gel glue, so it's not quite so uh, liquid as the other ones. I thought they might might actually be a bit better for this job. I have had some awful experiences with super glue and PLA. I find sometimes it tends to melt the PLA rather than gluing it together, but Again, this is the first time trying this stuff, so we'll see what happens. And hopefully, if we're lucky, it'll all work out as it's supposed to. Let's line this up. Again, get everything, make sure it's in the right place before you assemble. So I almost put that on back to front. The gap has to be this side. And this bit, because it locks in place, has to be on on there with the lock in place. Right. Yep, I think that's right. Now, super glue takes a little while to dry and it could probably do quite a bit of pressure. So I tend to put something quite heavy on top of this until it's set. So I'll, uh, I'll do that now and I'll come back to you when it's all dry. Right then, it's been a little while. Um, the glue didn't hold on just those three spots, so I went back and put a bead along this side and a bead along here. Be careful with the glue, because if it overlaps, then it might end up sticking things together, but it seems to have stuck. I mean, it does say up to 24 hours to um, to glue, and this has only been about half an hour so far. In fact, I've just found a sticky bit. <laughs>
under there somewhere. So yeah, be careful with it. Um, but for the most part, it's stuck, as you can see. Slide that bit across and then slide this bit out and the tray pops out. So that's the main part done, which is good. And the key, obviously, sits in there, pushes in, close that bit and close that bit. The next bit we're going to do are the tiles that sit on the front on top of this bit here. So it all looks nice and nice and tidy. Now these are quite important to get the right order. If you get the wrong order, it's gonna it's gonna mess things up completely. And also be careful because as you look, you've got a bigger gap at the bottom than you have at the top. So you want to make sure you get them on the right way around, otherwise it's gonna look all higgledy piggledy. So let me just take this out of the way. Right, actually, I won't take it completely out of the way, I'll just put it slightly back for back over here. Um, now, the end pieces, again, make sure that the longer bits on the bottom and the shorter shorter gaps at the top. And then you have the next ones in. The end pieces don't matter so much as to, but these are, there's like a, a sloped edge to the side of it, which fits in and sits over the top with the one that slides up and down. So you have to make sure you get those <coughs> in the right place. It'll pay to line all these up before you get try and glue them on, otherwise you'll get them in the wrong order and it'll all go wrong. Again, this one's got a sloped edge and a short bit at the top, so again, make sure it's in the right order. And then the end piece again. Large bit, short bit, so make sure you get them the right way around. When you've got them sort of in, what you think is in the right order, if you test fit them without any glue, they do sit on don't they don't really hold on very well they, they, they do sit on but there's a little bit of pressure and they'll pop straight off again be careful when you're pushing them on don't push them from the top or the bottom. Push them from the center because again, this bit is weaker where the line is and you'll find you break up. I've done it myself. I've broken a few of these top pieces off. So make sure you push from the center. It's very, it's very tempting to push from the top. As you can see, there's a slight gap for these two that slide. There probably shouldn't be. Oh, he says pushing it from the top, but as he just told you not to. And I see it doesn't quite fit on properly. If that's the case, you may need to get a stunning off and go down the edge just to make sure they pop on properly. But for our benefit, we'll just take a quick look and make sure these slide as you would expect them to. And to be honest with you, you're not going to see that anyway when the uh, when the lid's on. But if you if you're a perfect perfectionist, just take a knife and trim them down slightly, not too much, otherwise you'll gouge into the plastic. But and that will fit on properly. Um, then obviously when you've got them and you're happy with them, glue them on, same as before. Pop them off once you've got them on. In my case, use a tool. careful not to put too much pressure on the top of the bottom because they will they will just break especially in this silk PLA because they're a lot more fragile than they should be right now you've got them off again line them up You look at the center one as well it's only got it's got a much smaller groove which has to tie with the bottom bit down there so that's it's nice easy to get the center one right so when you've got them all lined up and you know they're in the right order the grooves in the right place etc get your glue Just splodge them on. Flip it over. 
over. Make sure the short bits at the top and long bits at the bottom. And just splodge it on for a second. It's supposed to bond in sort of 10 to 15 seconds for this glue um, and take 24 hours to set properly. But as long as it's on there and you're happy it's on there, you're okay to leave it. I must have this one seems to be okay ish. Not overly impressed to be honest. And then this one, flip it over. Same again. Again, short bit at the top, long bit at the bottom. Careful as well, try and get these lines to line up as best as you can. Sometimes they can move a little bit up or down and look a little uneven. It looks nicer if they're all lined up together. The middle one you don't glue. No glue on that one, otherwise it will go horribly wrong. That one just sits in there. Put it in at an angle and then flip it back. The one, the other side of it, make sure again you've got the angle bits lined up correctly. Put your glue on it. piece again short bit to keep an eye out for it if you're gluing it on upside down it really does look silly I tend to put glue in the center and a little bit top and bottom it just makes sure it's not going to go anywhere Normally I'd leave that to dry, but as I'm showing you guys how to build it, it might as well crack straight on. The next bit I do is the lock. This is where you need your biro spring, which well, sort of reasonably sized biro springs, it's not too bad. And your two little lock bits that you've you've built. It's quite a clever design, I quite like this little lock, it's quite easy to put together. You've got your bit that side, which obviously has to sit in that groove there. And it slides backwards and forwards like that. And then you flip it over and the spring has to seat in the little hole in there and in the hole in the end there. So you just slide it in and in there and that's it seated. So you just, and then slides backwards and forwards. And again, you need to apply glue down this section and glue down this section. And then it seats in the inside of the box there. Nice and easy. Again, this one is more important, this bonds properly, um, so glue it and if you've got a clamp or something just hold it in place for a little while. Fortunately, I 3D printed some clamps, I've got one here, which I really like actually, these are quite quite handy for doing, doing stuff like this. There is something awesome about being able to 3D print a tool. I don't, I'm not entirely sure what it is, but there's just something that sort of hits the right spot knowing that you 3D printed a tool to help you make other stuff. It's really, it's like 3D printing a 3D printer really, isn't it? Kind of one of those things that really just seems so awesome. All right, that's that glued. And now that's glued, you line it up that's it push it in place now I've just as you can see there's a little bit of excess get that cleaned up fairly sharpish so you don't want it going anywhere else it doesn't look like there's any really anywhere else but get your awesome 3d clump or 3d printed clump I should say and 
and leave that to dry for a bit and then when it's done we can uh, we can do the roof back in a bit right then here we are back again hopefully fingers crossed this is glued now yeah looks pretty solid so let's just give it a quick test before we go any further a bit slides okay that bit pops out all right oh you see look i've got a bit of glue on there Actually, you know what it looks worse on the camera than it does in real life. Anyway, uh, key pops out there. Slide that back in. Slide that one across. Pop that one down. Put the key in the hole. Uh oh. Oh, that was close. That was close. I thought I'd add that then. All right, <laughs> stuck across a bit. Key in and look at that. Perfect. See, that's a bit more glue there. Then you see. Got to be careful with the super glue. I did tell you. That's me being careful, and I still got glue everywhere. That's typical. But that all worked really well. So it's just the final stage now, putting the roof back on. One thing you may have noticed when I showed you the, uh, the thing on the print bed. So I've just done a video, which you may or may not have seen, about ghosting and how to track it down. Oh, look at that. You can see the lines there. That's ghosting. And you can see sort of the edges just around the sun there. That's ghosting as well. When I did my last video about how to troubleshoot ghosting, I did um, tighten the X belt, even though there wasn't too much of a problem. And it turns out that I didn't actually tighten the screws enough afterwards and the X belt were, were loose again. So I had to tighten it and I've just done another cube and as you can see, oh, let's focus on it, there you go, the ghosting's a lot, lot better, so none of that horrible stuff anymore. Right, so on to my favourite bit now, which is the roof, well, roof, lid, same thing. That goes on there and sits on there. And the idea is you secure this with a piece of filament. So I've got a section of red filament that uh, I used to print with. And what I tend to do is As you thread it through, take it just so it comes out a little bit at the other end, not a massive amount, and then cut it, put a bit too much, and then cut it the same amount on the other side so it overhangs just a little bit on each end. About like that. And then what I use is I get a soldering iron and melt it. And then and it stops it from coming out either side. To just support it the other end so it doesn't get pushed in when you're trying to mount it. Let's try that again now, just throwing the camera everywhere. Get your soldering iron, support the filament the other end so it doesn't go too far, and just if it's dirty, clean it off a little bit. Support it and then just melt very slightly the filament. Not to touch anything you're not supposed to just stops it from coming out either side to the same that side just melt the filament and just stops it from coming out just to put the 
mind before I forget. And your hinge works, but then the if you've got any little, any extra excess that I've got right here that you don't need, just hack that off. And then the same this side, if you've got any extra that's getting in the way, just just trim it. There you go, perfect, look at that. And that's your box done. And it all ready to go. I'm giving these away for Christmas presents, so if any of my family are watching this, if you get one, don't be surprised. If you like this video, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to see more content, and if you've got any suggestions or anything you'd like to see me do in the future, drop it in the comments and I'll uh, I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.